So fiber channel is a name, so that side is, you know, basically it's a, pro, it's a pronoun as opposed to a noun, so it has to be capitalized and it has to be spelled the way they spelled it. So we talk about fiber channel. Fiber channel, again, everything is ANSI standard. Now ANSI, interesting enough, even though the fiber channel started in Europe, was standardized in America. ANSI is American, American National Standard Institute, it's not ISO. From ANSI, it goes to ISO, so then it becomes worldwide. But it's an ANSI standard, so all the standards that we are going to talk about throughout this lecture are ANSI standards, and they're all done by T11. So ANSI has many, many groups, just like IEEE has 802 and so on and so forth. They have T11, T10, T9. T11 does this part, and, and, and so they standardize fiber channel for storage area network. So this is already a network now. And so there are three parts. There are host, there is a storage, and there is a network. And that is network, by the way, they don't call it network. They call it fabric, like fabric like it's a cloth. You know, you just very tightly knit. So, so this is a fiber channel fabric. There is a host and there is a storage. The fabric may consist of any kind of connection. Actually, you know, basically there are some some connections that will be recommended, but basically lots of switches interconnected. And then you have the storage, which is the disk arrays, as we talked about, with a controller. So the arrays are connected to the fabric and fabric is connected to the host. Now with this arrangement, any host can reach any disk with, in spite of all the failures. Fiber channel runs at 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 gigabits. It can run on copper or fiber. It allows point-to-point -point arbitrated loop and the switched fabrics. So point-to-point -point arbitrated loop or switched fabric. Either way is allowed. Switched fabric I have shown you a very simple configuration, but it could be any network of switches. Okay, and loop is simply you go around and around and around and around. And this is a node. By the time fiber channel was being developed, Ethernet was already here, so there are lots of give and take in the sense that there are several ideas from Ethernet that were taken by fiber channel. And now there are several ideas from fiber channel that have been taken up by Ethernet. So you will see some kind of, you know, similarity between the two because the same people are working on both. So the host adapter have a 64 worldwide name. So Ethernet computers and devices have 48 bit worldwide unique name, right? That is called MAC address. It's globally unique. But these guys were not happy with, with, um, with um, 64 bit. So they added 16 more bit to it. Sorry, they were not happy with 48 bit, so they added 16 more bits to it, making a total of 48 plus 16, 64 bit. And the the first 16 bit that were added could be different depending upon who gave you that address. In the case of Ethernet, all addresses come from IEEE. Suppose you start a new Ethernet company tomorrow, which we did actually in our lifetime, in my lifetime I did. So what you have to do is you have to go to IEEE and write a letter saying that I need an Ethernet address block and you pay $1,000 and you get a real nice big block, two to 24 addresses. And then when you make a device, one by one you number them. So your first device has this MAC address, second device has 02, 0001, 0010, and so on until you run out of them and then you say I need another one for $1,000. It's very cheap. However, it will become short in supply soon when we, when the internet of things comes in, but that's a little bit away. 48 bits are good enough. So right now they're available for very cheap, available for asking. So that is called OUI. OUI is organizationally unique identifier. This is what IEEE gives you. And then you can add VSID, which is the vendor specific. VSID is not virtual. Vendor specific ID. This is the number that you just put on every device one after another, so sequential number. VSID. And in the beginning is who gave you that, that OUI. And so other people could give you, it's not IEEE, it could be given by ISO or somebody else. And so that number, so there are different schemes and those go here in the first four bits will tell you who gave it. If the first four bit is one, then somebody gave you. If the first four bit is two, then somebody else gave you. And, uh, and actually, I think this picture is slightly wrong because the whole thing has to add up to 64 bit. 
So there are 12 bits which I didn't plot here. So there, before OUI, please put 12 bits. No, sorry, 12 bits are here. Okay, okay, okay. So 36 plus 24 plus 4 is 64. So that's fine. So if this organization gave you, then your 36 bit BSID as opposed to IEEE, which is 24 bit BSID. Yeah, because they decided, they, they, first of all, two reasons. First of all, they didn't want to be logged into IEEE. They are not IEEE, they are ANC. Right? So they are already have to go to some other organization to get the address, and that is not a good idea. Second thing is, if they want to be really, I mean, this could happen to Ethernet too, but it didn't happen to Ethernet. But basically, when it goes to ISO, everybody wants to have control over what goes on. So ISO would want to have control over who gives their addresses and how they're given, to whom they're given. You know, see, the thing in IP before, there was a lot of unfairness. Un, um, everybody knows that, right? Some countries got a lot of address, some countries didn't get the address, and some country control the addresses, some country controls this and that. I mean, you know all this history, right? So in this case, if there are multiple people who are giving the addresses out, we have to distinguish. So we need some bits for them. So they felt adding 12 more bits and then adding four bits for the for the entity that gave you the address would be sufficient. So anyway, we got 64-bit addresses. They call it worldwide names. They don't call it MAC address. They don't call it fiber channel address. They call it WWN. And you know what is BSID, right? Vendor specific ID. That is a sequential number that is given by the vendor. And the devices actually are like this. What happens is you have the, the on the computer itself, the, there's a slot which says fiber channel, but it is empty. There's nothing in it. The reason there is nothing in it is because you may want to connect single mode fiber or multi mode fiber or this fiber or that fiber. Fiber comes in many different varieties. And for each of them, you need a different kind of receiver. Unlike copper, where you can just plug in and then decide you know, whether you want to receive it at gigabit or megabit or whatever, right? In, ca in fiber, the receiver is different for different kinds of fiber. So you cannot just plug in something and then the customer will find out that they, they have a different kind of fiber, right? So they let the customer put it in, and that is called GBIC. Gigabit Interface Converter. This is a GBIC. So you buy the computer, you buy the switch, and then you buy the GBICs to suit your cabling. You cannot change the cabling very easily. If you have cabled this building with single mode fiber, you can just put a single mode GBIC. And then you bring the fiber in. Fiber comes connectorized, so the connectors go straight in, and so it's very easy to plug in. And um, hubs. So now the switches and the hubs. The hubs is a physical layer device, just like a Ethernet hub. It's a physical layer device. It's like an active patch panel. Multiple host or storage devices can be connected to a hub, but only one host can talk to one device at a time. So I mean, you can connect many things to a hub. Inside the hub, there is a kind of a ring. So basically, it's just like a ring configuration where only one host can talk to second host. When one is talking to the second one, third, fourth, fifth cannot talk. That is FCAL. That is the fiber channel arbitrated loop. Our switches. Switches is a link layer device, and they forward the frame control frames. So not, sorry, not frame control. They are the fiber channel frames according to destination address. So just like Ethernet switch, they look at the destination address, where it is going, which port this would get out, which port they came in, thing like that. And then you have routers and gateways which do higher layer, layer stuff as to connect to some other kind of network, another kind of device to speak some other kind of interconnection like SCSI or whatever. So the th key thing is to know about the switches. Fiber channel protocol layers. So now just like Ethernet and IP, they have a protocol layer which is five layers, but they do not follow ISO model. So it's difficult to say where is what. Their first layer is cable, second layer is encoding. What is encoding? Encoding is when you give one bit, the question is how does it look on the wire? First of all, they do 8-bit, 10 b encoding, which means that they take your 8-bit and convert them into 10 bits. All right, so that if something, so that way basically they are using only 60, 2 raised to 8 combinations out of 2 raised to 10 combinations. So right away they find out that this, there is an error in this byte because it is an invalid combination. Like 25 percent of the combinations are valid, 75 percent are invalid. So there's a good chance that they will catch byte in error right there. So that is encoding. Then they have how to send it to where to send it, and there are three ways: either by doing the switching, or by doing arbitrated loop, or by doing nothing, basically, which is point to point. 
Then they have to do things like encryption and RAID, which we'll talk about in a minute, and so that is generic services. And then they have to protocol map to the real device, and the real device may be SCSI, maybe IP device, or maybe IBM single byte control command set. You see, thing is, this is difficult to say. For you, this is all physical layer, because what you're doing is, maybe IP, if you're using IP, you can come here. But let's say you want to, you, you really want to connect to an SCSI device. Right? So the SCSI driver on your computer, if it is connected to fiber channel driver there, they'll somehow form a command in which a SCSI command will be sent on the top of this SCSI FCP protocol which on the top of all this and will go over the fiber channel network at the other end will come out. So it's difficult to say what is the application layer here. This is only disk. This is how it will start from the disk and it will go to the disk. Over there, the reason I'm saying is that application has a different meaning. Here, if you want to call everybody reading a disk as an application, then yes. That will be running on the top of this, on the top which is not shown here. Now, one thing to remember is that um, encoding is basically um, is different here. And then second thing is that they have different kinds of topologies and that the RAID and encryption are part of the protocol layer here. And then, of course, the mapping. <coughs> and then they use fast Sardis path first, just like we had e ECMP, equal cost multipath. They have equal cost multipath, but they call it FSPF. F fiber channel shortest path. So here is the interesting thing that they came up with the fiber channel fastest path before Ethernet guys adopted it. So first, fiber channel was the first one to use this whole routing thing in the in their thing, in their network, and then Ethernet people said, if you are going to do it, why can't we do it too? And so then they said, now it is not just IP which can do routing, Ethernet can do routing too. I mean, we taught you that the data link layer doesn't do routing, right? But that was when we taught you 473. In this course, we're teaching you that Ethernet can do everything, and so can fiber channel. So there is that. Second thing is, just like we talked about SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, all of these protocols have different versions. So if you go to standards and try to find out, you will find FCSW-3, which means the third revision, second revision, first one. So there's a dash and a number which tells you the revision on that standard. And all of these have different revisions. And then the vendor specific equal cost multipath multiplexing. So the thing is, while it allows the shortest path, but if you have more than one shortest path, how do you select? That is not specified in the standard. That is selected by the vendor. So everybody has a different way of selecting how to select them path. Now this is a complicated slide, and this actually has some chapters filled information here, whole chapter full of information. I just want to keep it at this level, and I don't really expect you to know more at than this level because Thing is, if you don't know what is FCSW, you get caught. You read fiber channel and everywhere they have these words spelt. I mean, they used. At the same time, knowing more detail than this would require a lot more time for you and it's not really relevant because fiber channel is going away. It is being replaced by Ethernet. The reason I have to teach you fiber channel because it's still there. It is still there. And Ethernet is changing because of it. So to teach you what change in Ethernet, like for example, you saw the fiber, Ethernet did flow control, right? Ethernet did congestion control, Ethernet did shortest path routing, all of it came from here. All right, flow control. Fiber channel has a very good flow control. They call it credit-based flow control. So you cannot send the packets until the receiver says, please send me. That means the receiver can say, please send me four packets, you send four packets. Receiver can send me four more packets, you send four more packets. So basically, receiver has to have the buffers before it can ask you to send, and then you send, and then it has buffers. So it doesn't, no, it is not that you send the packet, it makes all the way to the destination, and the destination drops it. It has no buffers. So this is one of the things that basically works very good for the disk. The disk don't like packets dropped. And the flow control is not one layer, it is two layers. You can do it half by half, or you can do end to end, or you can do both. All right. Does anybody know where in, in the real internet, on the wired internet network, not fiber channel, we do half by half flow control? Anybody heard of the end-to-end -end flow control? 
which layer or which protocol does end-to-end -end flow control. This is so well known that we do end-to-end -end flow control in TCP, but there is one more place where we do half by half, and that is in the wireless networks. Now, some of you have not taken wireless, but at least we teach a little bit of wireless in 473. And there, you know, because the link is so bad that you cannot really rely on the end-to-end, -end, so you do half by half. So that's why they allow you both. Then they have classes of service, class 1, class 2, class 3, depending upon how much reliability and you want. And whether you want connection-oriented or connection-less. Connection-oriented is like TCP. Connection-less is like UDP. Okay, so connection oriented, dedicated, physical link. So you get a link. So if you get a connection, class one service means you are paying for the whole path, whole road. And you get a wire, you get a fiber. Frame order is guaranteed. Delay confirmation is there, means delivery confirmation is there, and end to end flow control is there. So everything is guaranteed. That is the most expensive service. Less one is the connection less, you have multiple paths and therefore the packets may come this way, this way, this way, so they will not be guaranteed. The order will not be guaranteed. Half by half and end to end flow control. Datagram service, which has no delivery confirmation, only half by half flow control, this is the most common one. And then connection oriented virtual circuit, where you get a part of the link. Here you get full link, here you get virtual circuit. So this is a physical circuit, dedicated circuit, this is a virtual circuit. So you get a piece of the link, piece of the fiber with delivery confirmation. And then five is not defined. Six is connection oriented multicast with delivery confirmation. So this is for multicast, all of these are for unicast. And then class F, which is uh, packet switch delivery with confirmation for inter-switch communication only. So this is not end-to-end, -end, this is between the whole, between the switches. Alright, because they do have class F, I believe they probably have four bits for the classes, and so they would go from zero through F. Sixteen classes. Alright, now in Ethernet, we have classes, you saw, priorities have been replaced by classes. And how many classes we have there? Eight classes. <laughs> right. 